Here comes the nasty girl. Welcome back to the Nasty Graham RPG Podcast. This is Pale Blue Dot, Episode 3, Isolation and Dependency. Hans Gruverbeiter, President and CEO of the Astrofrac Mining Corporation, scowls as he reads the data pad that was just handed to him by his assistant. He wants another 15 tons of food product and water? Didn't he say he would be self-sufficient within a year? The assistant clears their throat. <clears throat> yes, sir. It appears the projected yield from the moisture farm and algae farm are much lower than predicted. He And those living habitats? 50 high-end residential pods? I thought his exploration crew numbered it only two dozen. The assistant shifts uncomfortably in their seat. It appears he has attracted more... Settlers to Europa. Apparently, he's been broadcasting sermons over the wide net about the colony, calling it Arcadia Prime. Something about removing oneself from the inner planets to better commune with the... Enough of that drivel. Just then, Dr. Victor Odrusiev knocks on the open door and peeks his head in. Ah, yes. Right on time as usual, Doctor. I hope I'm not interrupting Mr. Gruben by then. No, no, no. We were just discussing the latest demands for my son. Victor nods. Yes. Uh, Iggy has certainly found his uh, niche. Well, I need you to go and convince him to stop this nonsense. It's gotten out of hand. Well, sir, it is... uh, We've talked about um, his need for... uh, I can try to talk to him, but uh, you know how he can be. He... He truly believes he's found his purpose like you did with Astrofrak. Look, Victor, I've let him indulge in this little fantasy long enough, but already the press has latched onto this, some calling Astrofrak a front for his cult. You are going to tag along with this shipment of supplies to Europa and talk Iggy down. Double your normal rate, plus space travel pay, and a hefty bonus if you can manage it within 90 days of arrival. Victor pauses to calculate the bounty that was just offered. <sighs> Ah, when does the ship depart? Welcome back to Pale Blue Dot. I am John, and I will be your handler. I'm joined by... Hey, this is Ryan. Uh, I'll be playing Iggy Grooverbider, who is in Aliens, but thinks he's in contact. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is Devin. I'll be playing Dr. Arthur Kai, designated survivor. What's good, fam? Matt here. I'm going to be playing Victor Oldruziev, the linguist, the psychologist, and the guy with the chubby. It's fucking aliens, man. This is what he's wanted all his life. You made a mention about about Dr. Kai getting a chubby, I think. Everyone's chubbed up. Everyone's chubbed up. (laughs) Full chub. I think you just saw God. Yeah. You all burst into the airlock, catching your breath after your mad dash climb float back up through the asteroid into the the Utforsker. Back into the Utforsker. You take your helmets off, panting. You kind of look at each other in the eye. Dr. Kai hits a button on the wall and this white foam just sprays all over everyone. Piat! Ah! What the hell was that? I don't know. Oh, that's just that's the uh, decontamination foam. Uh, no, Iggy, I'm Iggy, Ignatius. Iggy, those things. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's pretty crazy. I I always thought that they would be more like um, humanoid or like, you know, more like us. But it's it's really cool. You know, there were a lot of um, ancient civilizations that uh, had spider deities, so I'm not surprised. Are you okay? Um, I'm better than okay. This is amazing. You what? We th- we need to talk later. But first, we need to get a, a message, yes? 
Yes. Dr. Kai just already starts walking towards the bridge. Floating. Zero G right Oh, now. yeah. Do we have like, uh, I don't know, like life support sensors? Can we, if people are out of the ship, is there a connection to our suits? Uh, there is. Uh, and that was the, you, you have, you had that on a heads uh, on a display on all your arms as part of the crew going out. And you did know that his suit stopped connecting. Okay. Um, after it got tossed, his body got tossed into the uh, tunnel. Arthur's looking at that screen that displays all of our suits, our heartbeats. You see a big offline over Noah Hayes's vitals. He sits down. Victor's just standing in the corner, staring at the screen, just running through what happened down there and just like processing what it was that there are aliens, that they're here, that Major Hayes is gone, dead, missing, no idea. Dr. Kai is leaned back, reclined in the chair with his uh, two hands covering his face and eyes. What do we do? Kai tries to speak. He just, his mouth hangs open, shaking his head. Um, I mean, well, we need to go back. How? He was the only one who, uh, no offense, had any skills out there. We are scientists. And Iggy, you are, and you see he just kind of leaves it hanging with his hand pointed at you in the air and kind of shrugs your shoulders I'm, and I'm, looks back at the screen. Right. I'm the chief sustainability officer of Astrofrac. Yeah. And as such, I will find a way to return us to the asteroid. We're s- still on it. To the, to the in- Inside. Yes. Bleat. Dr. Kai's going to go to that uh, dorm, that spare dorm that we've made into a medical chamber. Yep. Any chance I could have a mass spectrum uh, spectrometer yeah yeah why not like a little 3d print size of a 3d printer yeah you, you have you know a, a basic lab there and to some extent there there is a, a mining equipment that could also be used for like you know like a, an atomic what are they called like a laser microscope yeah a, a, a highly detailed microscope electron electron microscope Ooh. thank you maybe some uh centrifuges in there as well yep uh, he's going to take out uh, a little vial from his pocket and he's going to put that sample of that goo that we found underneath the creature. He's going to put it in a centrifuge and uh, he just spins it up and walks away. Turns into a blue ball and starts powering the entire... No. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been listening to his whoa, 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 whoa. Any mention of goo, I just can't stop laughing. It's going to go into my, go into my bloodstream. That's what's going to happen. Um, and then he takes the that sliver of that strand, that red silvery strand, and he's going to put it in, uh, under the microscope, start warming it up, firing it up. Yep. Yeah. Once you give me, uh, what's your what's your bio? It's pretty high. My um, bio is a sixty one because I leveled it up. Yep. Uh, I have a forty three in forensics as well. Okay. What kind of information are you trying to get from this strand, and then what? And then probably more forensics for the other one. Um, but what are you trying to get from this? Uh, composition and structure is it you know how does it hold itself together how does it retain this tension how does it transfer energy what material is it made of is it conductive Mm -hmm. you find that it it is um, clearly an organic uh, material doesn't appear to be synthetically like plastic or anything like that but it in it it, for all intents and purposes if it looks like a strand of silk with uh, you you pulled a piece that had um, a bit of that bioluminescence, and it's almost like it's a um, a fiber, like a a fiber line that goes through that that kind of glows that red. Remarkable tensile force. He writes, or he records into a little voice recorder. Yep, and you hear the centrifuge whir, whir down as it completes. <sighs> Doctor Kai is going to start transmitting this information. He has a couple of colleagues that still work in the in the industry he's gonna does he have to do that from the bridge or could he do it from he could do it from here uh are you going to try to do that without anyone else knowing on the ship no okay it'll be just open to the logs yep uh he'll send he's gonna send it to lunar command as well okay 
he sets up the chessboard while all these things are buffering. Iggy, you see on the logs as you're sitting in the bridge, these these messages queuing up to be sent to command about the composition of the material and um, some observations about the the structure and the creature. Do you send actually? Do you send anything about the creature or just the the just the material? Okay, it's so there are messages that go to uh, MIT, mm-hmm. uh, UC Berkeley, and a just a set of coordinates, a location at the South Pole. Okay, in Antarctica. Yep. Yeah, you see these these messages queuing up and to be sent through the comms relay. There's a lot of data in there, and you remember for this mission, it was specific that. Outbound communications would be reviewed by the captain and be approved and sent because of the secret nature. So they're like queued up waiting I'm for your like not even yeah paying attention you just to it. Yeah, I kind of I'm I'm more interested in looking. I'm, I'm researching the ancient spider <laughs> deities at this point. Okay, has Ziggy played D and D? Oh, definitely. Yeah, big Lolf guy. Yeah, twentieth edition. Yeah. <laughs> That's still one. Yeah, still one. T D one. Yeah, they call it. They kept it going. Yeah, it's the next DLC subscription. Yeah, (laughs) platinum pass. Right. (laughs) You pull the uh, material out from the centrifuge and put it on a plate and set it, settle it under the microscope. You see, you focus it in, and you see cells. Uh, You you don't really know. You can't identify what they are. You would assume that this is the blood of this creature. It's just an assumption from where it was. And why don't you roll a forensics for me? 36 under 43. There you go. You succeeded a roll finally. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, John. Thanks, guys. (laughs) There's these cells that you would assume are either blood cells or or like uh, immune cell, like uh, autoimmune or immune cells. And there are these small multicellular cells objects that appear to be arranged in a very tight grid that doesn't look organic. Crystalline? Not crystalline, but they are all spread out in an even pattern. And between them, it, it looks like they are manipulating, some, like they grab a, a what you think might be a blood cell, and then like four of them converge on it, and you can see it like tear it apart. You don't really know what it's doing at at this level. You can't see beyond this kind of cellular level. You're not you're not able to see molecular with the equipment you have, but um, you think it's taking it apart. Maybe it's some sort of immune uh, or you know a, a disease repellent. Doctor Kai writes nanobots? Question <laughs> mark. They, um, they look organic, but you can't tell really specifically from this with this microscope. microscope. He writes CRISPR? Question mark. But it's very clearly every time like a cell wanders by, they like a group of them grab it and start to work on on that. Okay, he doesn't share that with anyone. Mm-hmm. He takes that. He takes a flash drive out. He takes the sample and puts it in a little secure. Yep. And he's going to take it with him. He walks back to his quarters. Matt, what is uh, what's Victor up to? Well, that's a good question. Would you like to play chess? Yeah, he's probably showered. Uh, and we'll go and look for the doctor, uh, and see, see what he's up to. There's a knock on your door. Come in. Uh, ah, did you send everything? No, I sent the readings, the, I sent information regarding the fiber to lunar command, as well as a couple of other experts team. I've used them in the past to identify materials. They're discreet. Did it look like anything you know? No. So this, it's not like Major Hayes thought, not uh, India. This is actually something else. I don't know yet. This is, this is beyond us. Agreed. But there are three of us here in one, well, somewhere. Kai is like, is internally he's wrestling himself. He's there's he has inner conflict. I think and he you're a, you have psychotherapy. Yes. You think uh, Kai doesn't know how to verbalize. Uh, he can't talk about Hayes right now. Like he 
something is okay. He's not processing that information. I lost. He, he's definitely lost some sanity. If you could quantify it, <laughs> it is uh, going to be difficult for us all for a, a, a little while. Yes, until we can at least get a plan. But it is uh, a fact that he is gone right now, and you and I have to keep it together for. Uh, the sake of this. Kai makes a move on the chessboard, scratching his chin. He looks up at you. I understand. Hayes was always, Noah always was a mission first kind of guy. Yes. And you had, have the most experience with him. You know how tough he is. He's made it out of worse, yes. Think back to some of your missions with him. He's shaking his head. Noah's been a good friend of mine. He always appreciated what I did. Well, then the best you can do is focus on what you do. This uh, this creature, the samples, there is nothing on it like Earth. He's shaking his head no. Uh, well, let's... I, I think we need to get Iggy involved in this. Dr. Kai nods. Just gather whatever facts we can. What we've seen, what the sensors read, and start putting some pieces together. I trust the science. Exactly. He stands up. Um, John, do we have any... Um, are there, like, camera feeds on the outside of the suits? Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start reviewing that footage for um, images to send back to... Uh, the lunar base. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, of, of the creature specifically? Or? Creature, um, the creature, the internal makeup of the asteroid, just to kind of um, validate what I'm going to send back yep. for our mission. So I kind of, I, I, when I, I look up for my research and I, I see uh, Kai's kind of list of men, I not even, look, I just hit send on all of them. Yep. Don't even look at them. <laughs> and then I, but, uh, just before I say um, uh, initial findings for the asteroid NEA 1782 Juliet upon drilling we found a hollow core with what appear to be two um, large particle accelerator rings inside if you look at figure one upon further inspection we found several areas of we'll say webby large webby nodules uh, which we in turn explored and encountered an extraterrestrial life form. Those are figures two and three. We will continue to try to establish communication with said beings and uh, keep you monitored on our progress. Click send. You know, it's going to take a couple hours for this to get anywhere anyways. You're, you're kind of far out. I love the private sector. <laughs> <laughs> are you, you're saying that to the UN uh, flight director or to Astrofrag? Yes, both. both. Yeah. Yep. Just then, um, Victor and Arthur, you walk in back into the bridge. Ignatius. Oh, hey. Doctor. Doctor. How are we doing? It's as good as we can. You? It was, uh, it was quite a, a shocking turn in the asteroid. We'll need to be more prepared for our return mission. I sent information to Lunar Base, as well as the experts I mentioned in our first meeting. Oh, excellent. Yes, uh, hopefully they will have uh, some insight. I do have something else I wish to share with just you. The sample of what I believe is blood from that creature that was suspended in that cavern. It is a complex, multicellular organism. It has autoimmunity. I believe they can only survive in atmosphere. We were lucky that I believe our suits kept us out of its reach. I don't think they'll traverse the, the asteroid. Good. There's some sort of... It's almost gene editing, but nanobots or a editing a virus 
something exists in that creature's blood. I don't know if this was something it was contracted if they all carry this quality. Uh. I believe I believe Noah Hayes is dead. If he had opened a wound out there, any kind of foreign bacteria would kill him. I, I don't know. I mean, Captain Hayes is a pretty tough dude. You know, I say we just hope for the best and, you know, maybe when we go back down there, you know, it'll we can you know, once we establish communication, I think through the through the um maybe through the filaments I think it's all just, you know, one big misunderstanding. Dr. Kai is shaking his head again. You think they uh, communicate through their webbing? Yeah, man. Why? I just, I, I mean, you, you've seen spider webs, right? Yes. So they can feel the vibrations and they use those to ascertain what's around them. So maybe. It's possible on that a the higher fiber. Level, the fiber did seem to be. M- biomechanical almost it had some some really cool properties able to transmit information okay i could tell you in less scientific terms but essentially ignatius is correct so what next i think we need to prepare for our our return will they send anything do you think the un will send someone out here well i hope so i mean we'll have to we'll have to wait and wait for return messages yeah i, I would think that that once they see the magnitude of uh of our discovery out here that 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 they'll that someone will come but i think until then we should you know explore all possibilities do they know the fate of noah um i mean i no they they don't because we don't you know um send them another message tell them major noah hayes has been trapped within the asteroid they'll send someone that's the only way. Otherwise, we get the order to return home. I, I don't think he's alive, but I'm not going to leave him there. I can. He has a family. Yeah, it's a good idea. So we we can do that. We'll let them know he's been trapped there. Maybe we can get an extraction team out here. Additional resources to, you know, check out this asteroid. Somebody will have to send something. It's uh, the first contact of an extraterrestrial in. What, uh, I'm sorry, but is a spaceship. The Space Force won't let their, that their esteemed major go missing. It would be devastating for them. If people were to know that they left a man behind, they'll come. He's trying to reassure himself that they'll come. You know that it'll probably take a week for anyone to get out here. Just to get that crew together, the messages back and forth, they might require some sort of um, clarifying information, you know, it's not going to be, you know, right away soon. I think Kai has resolved that, that he's resolved that, uh, that Hayes is dead. Yeah. Like he's not, he was just days away from retirement too. <laughs> he lives <literally, laughs> <literally, literally> his <laughs> last job. Yeah. So I, he, Kai spends that, mo- if we do that time skip, he spends most of that week just thinking about We're not doing that time skip. Okay, cool. Good. <laughs> Don't worry. You kind of sit, all sit there in silence. The decontamination of those suits will take a bit longer, a full decontamination, and then retrofit and refit for oxygen and all that will take some time. And you're already pretty late in the day, so you resolve to take a rest that night. Anyone sleep? Iggy probably sleeps. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can I roll? Can I roll to sleep? Yeah. Pow? Pow, yeah. Arthur Kai falls asleep. He's just exhausted. The yeah. adrenaline. You have, uh, you're in the lab and you literally pass out on the chair. Victor? Fitfully. Very fitfully. Iggy, you wake up to the rhythmic plucking of the Langalek, your alarm clock tone that you yourself recorded. <laughs> <laughs> you unstrap from the bed and float in zero G towards the door frame. You rub your eyes as the door swooshes open, revealing the low Norwegian sun spilling soft orange light into the palatial bedroom of the Guva Baitar Manor outside of Oslo. You shield your eyes as you walk out towards the railing, bare feet cold against the ceramic tile. As your vision adjusts, you look out over the south lawn, revealing thousands of people cheering as you raise a hand. They chant, 
Chak Tai, Chak Tai. You smile, the low sunlight glinting off of your rows of pointed teeth. Your thorax shakes as you let out a series of clicks, your four spider-like legs tapping messages into the web around you. Your forearms spread out to receive this new flock as a cloud of brown dust envelops them all. You wake up. Wow. <laughs> she, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Do I ha- do I have to wake up? Can I <laughs> can I stay stay asleep? <laughs> that string instrument yeah. plays the alarm clock. Huh. I should practice. <laughs> How'd everyone sleep? Not good. You he shakes his head again. It puts a cup of coffee down, a pot of coffee. Yeah, you know, I I heard that like Floats. sleeping in zero g took some getting used to, but I feel like I've adjusted really well. Not me. Ah, uh, also, I kept playing that moment when it grabbed him. I don't, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to go back in. We can't. We would die, all of us. It would, we have no way to fight back. Not yet. I'm running some tests. Maybe there's a way we can influence these, disrupt these, this information in the fibers. But well, I mean, let's, we don't have the equipment here. Let's, let's think of it this way, though. I mean, you know, can you imagine, like... You're just in your your home spaceship, man. Like you're cruising through the galaxy, and then all of a sudden, these weird four limbed creatures in these crazy suits kind of show up, like right up in your face. Like you'd be weirded out too, right? So let's just think for a minute. We can, you know, I th- I think you're both right that we need to kind of dial it back. Arthur relents a bit and think about that. think about what we're doing here, but it's important that we. Establish some kind of communication, you know? Is a surprising amount of empathy, Ignatius. So, well, I mean, you know me, doctor. I'm just, a, I'm a very empathic person, you know? I got a lot of love to give. Yes. Uh, uh, I also thought about the, the fibers. And I, you said that spiders use vibration. There is none of that, is it? Could it be, I don't know, uh, there's no power, right? On this, the ship didn't detect any? Those rings were generating some type of force, gravitational force. If this network can harness that gravitational force, it is an enormous amount of energy. We don't have anything to manipulate gravity, right? To sustain atmosphere, it doesn't take much. It doesn't, what we, doesn't take what we saw. That network is capable of generating world-ending amounts of energy and force. If it wanted to, it could have slammed into Earth. The kind of force that would stop a, an asteroid hurtling through the galaxy, just like that. Well, I still do not understand how that works. I have people looking at it now. Well. Or they will. I sent it out. Communication. It's going to be slow. I suggest we get up off the asteroid. Maintain orbit. You, we have video, correct? Of these things? Does anybody remember uh, uh, sounds? Any sort of auditory communication? It, I, I, um, you know, I do kind of recollect, because I, I was, I got a little too close to him, I'll admit. But I, I do kind of recollect um, almost in anthropod or insectoid kind of um clicking rhythm sort of thing you know you ever hear like beetles or um cicadas yeah yeah crickets that not sort necessarily of yeah vibration yeah. sound did it have antennae you don't remember uh you don't think so any chance that the major's voice recorder had some sort of bluetooth or uh, you know, Wi-Fi signal uh, that it would be separate from his suit. And Kai knows that uh, he used the voice recorder too. Um, I don't know if that's possible in 2099. Well, his personal voice recorder probably wouldn't connect to anything specifically. Any equipment that he had, any electromagnetic equipment that he had, like a like if he had a phone or like whatever, some something on him that was separate from the power power of the suit, it could possibly be still on if it was on his body still. You know, uh, specifically you, Arthur, know 
he does have that uh, laser pistol, but he didn't obviously bring it with him on that initial trip. Ah. He doesn't mention the laser pistol to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> there may be a way we can find him. Not people. Someone comes. Help comes. We may be able to lead them to Noah's location. But the three of us, are we would not survive. You need weapons. You need a team. But I agree. We should, if there's a way, even if we don't communicate with them, as Ignatius suggests, if there is vibrations, I don't know, maybe a way to record it even. Oh, you, there is, it is a vacuum where those rings are and they, we don't think they can come out of those cocoons or whatever it is. Yes. So perhaps we can, is there a probe still down there? Can, can it take sensors while, while, while down there and try to uh, figure out how it works more? The probes are programmed to measure seismic activity. If we could land the probe on these strands, we could maybe start to measure some of their actions, some of their movements, record them. If it's some type of informational language, if it's binary or otherwise. If we can find some sort of uh, code repetition pattern anything i i can start to run it through some programs i've got uh, some ai that can help with it it's an excellent idea doctor ignatius could you pilot the probe oh absolutely this is the earth's most important wiretap maybe ever oh, let's hope it goes well none of you have pilot right fuck no nope. nope. <laughs> cool youtube videos <laughs> it's also why he didn't sleep good he's watching youtube videos i mean i you know i, I i've uh i tried some of the simulators for for a lot of our probes as our you know like to be a really hands-on sustainability officer you do know that while they can be m manually driven to be a bit more precise they do have rudimentary like navigation ai in them that can be used to point and click at a point in space where they can um, be deployed. So Input some of the 3D mapping that we did from the original yep. like photographs. You bring that on the computer and you can see the rings and all them uh, in 3D space and you can set a waypoint onto one of them with one of the probes. You're doing that. Um, Arthur, you didn't, you probably didn't go back to your bunk this morning. Um, I think he did. Yeah, maybe before he put the coffee on or he put it on to heat up and then he walked back into his room. Okay. Let's say you put it on and you, you had this conversation, had a coffee and then went back to your room just to get, um, maybe get dressed into a, into a, not the same clothes you had on last night. He has another little project as well that I think he's been, he wants to tend to. You, uh, open the little greenhouse that you have for this orchid. Can you, uh, roll sanity for me? 35 under 50. All right, zero. And you're taken aback. Your orchid is there as normal, but growing next to it is this off-white trunk, kind of a, a cylinder that's probably about 10 to 12 centimeters tall. And off of it is one thinner branch. And hanging from that, is a black fruit with red, red orbs embedded within. He leans his face, just draws closer and closer to the, to the glass, to the screen. What are you? Nothing you've ever seen of or heard of, ever. He stares at it for a while. He sits on the ground in front of it. He grabs a little cylinder, like a syringe, he puts it in a port in the bottom and injects water into the system. Let's see what you become. Meanwhile, back on the bridge, you see the probe make its final approach to the external uh, ring and begin landing. As it lands, you notice that the lights start to trace faster. You're seeing it on the, on the camera feed from the probe. As it starts to speed up faster and faster, it almost starts to become one solid light around both of the rings. You all feel 
your stomach drop out as if you're falling from a great distance, free falling. Alarms start to blare in the cockpit of the ship. You look out of the bridge where the sun was just beaming through your cockpit is no longer there. Sun is gone. You're getting these intense waves of rumbling on the exterior of ship as things start to spark. Alarms go off, red lights come on, and you feel this undulating up and down pressure in your gut. You definitely puke. <coughs> Victor will move over to the uh, the panels that he was accessing when Hayes was still on the ship and they were doing mining. And he's mm-hmm. just going to start looking at whatever the hell data is coming off of this thing and start just reading it out loud. There's these loud blaring, wah, 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 wah. And on the screen it says, uh, power core containment failing, wah, 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 wah. What does that mean? We're not, uh, we need to get off. Yeah. Does this mean we need to get off the ship right now? It means you need to do something about it, fix it, or turn off the. So uh, we're leaking actually, radiation, maybe. When do you have computer? Let's see. Victor, no, no. Arthur has computer science sixty-one. My YouTube videos did give me plus twenty percent on uh, ship services. Cool. YouTube, bro. I love YouTube. Arthur, you've been on long distance trips before. These self-contained power units, uh, if there ever is a major malfunction, typically the computer will auto shut it off and and turn on auxiliary battery power for temporary um, use until it's resolved, whatever issue is resolved. Um, You're hearing that alarm as you run up to the bridge. You see Victor frantically reading off like almost uselessly reading off these logs like everything's coming up red what are you doing i i don't know he goes to turn off main power uh can you do it manually like assuming the computer didn't already this this countermeasure didn't activate automatically it didn't uh so arthur is going to try to do it manually all right go ahead and roll um computer 70 over 61. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 007. Not, I got a seven, oh, seven. and then the zero zero. So zero zero seven. I succeed. It's a fucking off button and I whiff it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, scrolling through the system. You're not familiar with a specific ship at all. Uh, and it takes you some time to understand what's going on. It seems like the, the, com- the bridge computer is no longer able to contact the main power control unit. Something is severing it. Um, on the screen, you see uh, radi- uh, external radiation signatures are, are, are going through the roof, like high danger, high danger, uh, as if you're being hit by like a, a, a sun, um, solar storm? a solar storm. Kai gets on the radio. This is Kai to crew. Get your suits on now. Victor doesn't hesitate and immediately moves to the decant decontamination area and begins putting his suit on. Dr. Kai spill on the way. He spills out a couple of more potassium iodide tablets. <laughs> and, ha- and, and as you walk into the, imagine like outside the airlock or where our suits are and he hands one to each of you and he just puts one in his mouth. He puts two in his mouth. <laughs> Arthur, you, with that success, you do know that if you can get to uh, the panel itself and turn it off while someone can get the auxiliary power turned on and connected, then you can at least get it to stabilize. How many people, so uh, if Dr. Kai is going to start making his way towards the uh, the power cell and going to try to turn it off there, um, but he'll tell, Victor, you, can, you said you can take directions. Yes. Go to the bridge and turn on auxiliary power when I say so. No problem. Victor will... Ignatius, his, come with me. Go to the bridge. He's going to bring Iggy to the power unit. Hey, Doc, what's uh, what's going on? Do you think they you think they turned on the big hoops? I don't know yet, but we need to turn this core off right now. Make sure these panels stay closed. All right, man. You start popping over open some uh, some of the control panels. What do we got here for skills? I'm going to tell you that I have nothing that's 
going to come in useful in any of these scenarios, which I think is great. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any uh, engineering skills, particularly. Is there engineering? Yeah, it's a science. Oh, you, it's oh. a science you can take. Can I persuade the panels to stay close? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Iggy, why don't you give me a, um, a uh, dexterity roll? Just five times your, your score there. And Kai, why don't you give me um, a science engineering, but with a 20 for just kind of your baseline knowledge. I got a 42 under t- under 65. Okay. Nice. Uh, 76 over 20. Okay. That's, I think that's my first success of the game. Nice. Woo! <laughs> Take them where you get them. <laughs> Iggy, you're, you're able to ensure that the ones that are, are getting popped open, looks like there's some sort of coolant lines there that you need to keep contained uh, and you're doing a good job of kind of playing uh, hot potato there. Arthur, you open this panel and it just like your mind goes blank to what you're looking at. There are uh, switches and cables and uh, everything in front of you and you start just kind of frantically pulling at cables uh, and switching things off. He tries to put one of them back in. Yeah. But it, it, the, the alarms continue to blare. Iggy, you feel the steam start to come off those coolant panels uh, as the power core heats up rapidly. Uh, Ignatius, uh, I could use your help. This is not Please. a fun song. Okay. Okay, Doc. What's, uh, what, what can I do? His hands here are like shaking. He, and he's shaking his head looking at this panel. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Eeny, uh, meeny, that one. Uh, why don't you roll a engineering with a 20? <laughs> yeah, just 20. Unless you have it. But. Got an 83. You're plugging the cables back in that uh, Arthur had pulled out, and uh, it doesn't seem to be helping. Is there another way to cool down this engine? Or is there an, like an emergency? Yeah, why don't you roll my computer science? Like emergency stop, like even if it damages the core. Yeah. Uh, 15 under 50. You know that uh, at the worst case, you can seal off the aft uh, hanger or bulkhead and vent everything into space, which will cool it down enough that it will uh, it'll hold for a little while at least. Will that give us some radiation shielding as well? For you guys? Yeah. No, because, well... Yeah, for, well, the radiation isn't coming from the core. Oh, it's, it's external, coming, external radiation. External okay. Radiation. That's not good either. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's going to grab Ignatius. Let's go. Come on, get up. Oh, all right. He's pulling you towards the door, and he's going to engage that emergency protocol to seal off the aft. Okay. Big, heavy bulkhead sliding door closes behind you, <laughs> and you just hear all of the air whoosh out from behind it. He lets out a sigh and leans against the wall. I don't know if you were uh, watching the feed from the probe before the uh, before this all happened, Doc. But it it was spinning and spinning, um, and then just it was went from being like a just just picture like a dot, and then it's like slowly turns into just a blur of white, and that's what happened. He runs up to the bridge. He starts inputting. Uh, he did some basic astrogation uh, for our trip to the Lagrange point. Yep. So he's going to start doing some astrogation, some to determine our location. You get up to the nav computer, and uh, it says no fix. It doesn't know where you are, and you try putting inputting the location of the of the lunar base of the Lagrange point, and it says it can't cannot calculate, cannot calculate. Can I do some uh, manual? Uh, astral navigation, maybe sure, using yeah. a physics skill. Yeah. Does my specialty in exobiology apply here? <laughs> no. Okay. 83 over 50. You're all kind of standing around now watching Arthur uh, attempt to get, uh, you know, pulls out like a data pad and starts manually putting, putting down numbers and uh, doing calculations. Uh, Arthur, it just doesn't make sense. Any of this, all of it doesn't make sense. You don't have a point of reference right now. Outside of the ship, it's just black as the push and pull on your stomach continues. Does uh, it seem like we're moving? You don't know. You have no idea. You can't tell up or down, left or right. Oh, 
like this. I don't like this at all. I drop that data pad in the ground. I, he, Arthur puts a hand up on the wall and starts and just leans there and he closes his eyes. His head is hanging low. What is happening? The power, the core, what? Uh. We're moving. The, the lights, the rings, they activated. They're did producing. We, did, did the probe do it? No, man, the, the probe just, uh, I mean, unless the probe, like, landed on their their webbing and told it to, but I don't think that happened. I think they they probably just weren't, you know, super cool uh, with having visitors. Detach um, the probe. He points towards the console. Do we do we have power to do that right now? Uh, you can communicate with yeah. the probe, All yeah. Right. Yeah, man, let's release. The probe lifts off. Arthur, you see that the, the main power core now is starting to ice over and power down. And you can see that the the lights start to flicker and the screens start to flicker as well. Um, and, you know, you need to probably cut over to auxiliary power. Uh, are there, uh, I think it's on over here on this panel. Do it, doctor, please. He's still leaning on the wall. Roll your 20. See, just, just see what happens. 48. Okay. Yeah, probe can't really get a fix on anything in there. It's just like one crazy top, man. Um, I, can't, I can't get the auxiliary power. Matt, you're, you're fumbling with it. Uh, you're going through screens. Things are shaking. Alarm bells are, are ringing. And the, the lights and some of the screens themselves are, are flickering out. And then everything goes quiet. <laughs> All power goes out. Does that sensation persist? Shortly after all the power goes out, you feel that that sinking sensation start to relieve. And outside, you see the space around you start to come back into existence. And you see the big blue marble of Earth on your main screen. And that's what we'll stop for now. We did it. Oh, yeah. success. Oh. Thank you for listening to this episode of Pale Blue Dot. Please spread the word, leave a review, tell a friend, confess listening to Nastagram to a priest. Anything and everything helps. Intro music by Wilhelm Scream. Scores by Adrian Von Ziegler. Check out our page at nastagramrpg.com where you can find links to all of our socials as well as information about our other arcs. Stop on by the Nastagram Lounge on facebook.com and let us know your favorite horror movie trope. That's nasty. That's a short one, but it's okay. There's a lot of science stuff. <laughs> oh, I was just about to ask. I was like, do you think we're heading to Earth? <laughs> we we gonna die? He's <laughs> gonna shoot a nuke at this fucking thing and blow us up. <laughs> we're in the-